Hello everybody, this is Mr. Araba. Welcome back to another episode of the Seattle Mariners franchise here on MLB The Show 23 where our Mariners will have two series at home today. Starting off with the Miami Marlins coming to town. The Marlins, not a good team this year. The 29th best team at baseball actually, only better than the Washington Nationals. And the Mariners will host them in a three-game set to begin in today's episode. If you're excited for this one, make sure you drop a like and you subscribe down below, especially if you want more franchise content. Luis Castillo will grace the mound for the Mariners. Hasn't done the best this season in terms of Castillo ace numbers. Still having a pretty decent year, though, as he'll start off the day against John Birdie, who will pop this one into center field. Julio Rodriguez will be underneath it, and that's how this ball game will start. And we'll take a look at the Marlins lineup we already talked about. Not the best team this year, having a very down season. They have still have talent in the lineup. No Jazz Chisholm, though, in the lineup. The All-Star is getting the day off, but that is how they look. One through nine. Next up, we'll see Jose Iglesias, full count pitch. This one's chopped over to short, so we're off over one hop it. And he'll throw it on to first to record the second out. And then Luis Arise, the AL batting champ from a year ago, is going to do what he does best, and that's bloop one in there for a base hit. And Arise is on first, hitting 300 again this season. So I'll bring up Jesus Sanchez up next, who can't connect on the sinker. And the Marlins are scoreless in the first. On the mound for them will be Trevor Rogers as the lefty has not had a good five start so far. 6.56 ERA, 1.71 whip. He's hoping to correct that here today. It's just off against Colton Wong at first. He takes a full count, pitches to second base. Where that one is fielded and thrown on over. And that'll be how the day starts for the Mariners. We'll take a look at their lineup. It's pretty standard. Not seeing anything different. Haggerty is getting the start at DH today. Hasn't done the best in this past 10 games, though. Hitting 133 in that span. And Tom Murphy, since this is a lefty, he will be in the catcher position. Also in the nine hole. J.P. Crawford up next. Draws a five-pitch walk. So that'll put one on. For the Mariners, and Ty France up next, who takes the first pitch and drills it to left field. A slider got hung, and France is going to make Rodgers pay. A two-run shot for Ty France, and all that for Rodgers trying to turn around his misfortunes this season. is not off to the best start. Eighth homer of the season for Ty France. The Mariners are on the board first, and they lead 2 to nothing as Trevor Rodgers, about kind of what you've seen so far this season. This is kind of bat in a nutshell. Julio Rodriguez up next, takes a full count and perfectly hits this one into the right center gap, cutting away from the center fielder. That one is down, and Rodriguez has some elite speed. He's going to try to turn this one into a triple, and he does successfully. Slides in ahead of the throw, and it's a one-out triple for J-Rod, his third of the season. That brings up Tasker Hernandez, who drills this one up the middle and is through the infield. An RBI single for the right fielder as Hernandez has really turned around his bat. It was very critical of him in the May recap. I think he might have heard me. So now 3-0 Mariners as Pollock apparently doesn't check his swing of time on the low curveball. I would disagree. And the next pitch, Suarez is actually going to take off and steal second base. I think it was a design hit and run, but Hernandez got such a good jump, he might as well take it. His fourth stolen base of the season. And then later in the at-bat, though, it's not going to matter as Suarez swings and misses on the circle change, doing the strikeout like he does a lot. We'll go top two now as Segura will lead off, and Gene Segura hits this one over first where France makes a poor attempt at gloving it. Actually going to rule him on an E3 on that one, so error of the day. That brings up Yuli Gurriel up next, who draws a strikeout. He thinks it was a walk. Sorry, Yuli. Got to go back and watch the tape. That was actually clearly a strike. Jorge Soler up next will ground this one over to short where Crawford backhands it and throws Wong off the base. Should have been a double play instead. The second error of the inning. I mean, what are we doing on defense here? We should be through the inning. Instead, it's two on, and it's about to be two outs as Garcia hits into the infield fly rule. But that should have been the fourth out of the inning. Instead, Jacob Stallings, the catcher's up next, and he's going to make Mariners pay. He gets the free opportunity, and he drives in a run as the tag just misses on Segura. And the Marlins get one here in the top of the second. Castillo a little annoyed, you have to think. As the next batter, Suarez, makes a nice backhand play. And Johania Suarez, thank you for playing some defense. That's what it means. Suarez has done very good on defensively this season. And we're going to go top five now, still 3-1, where Wong makes a diving attempt at one of the middle. Good try. I can applaud the attempt, even if you don't make it. However, Wong gets a little bit of unfortunate news. He's actually feeling some discomfort there on the field, clutching at his rib cage. So he'll have to come out of the game. Robinson Cano will take his place, and hopefully it's not nothing major for our leadoff hitter. 
Jose Iglesias up next, gets a fastball and hits this one into center field for a base hit. So the Marlins got the first two on here in the top of the fifth inning for Luis Arise, who swings and misses at the strike. That's actually Arise's first out against Luis Castillo. Six for six against Castillo coming into that bat. Next batter, Jesus Sanchez, will fly out into center field for the second out. No tag. So that'll actually do it for Castillo. Manager's going to come pull him. Trust Penn Murphy instead to get through the inning. I mean, Castillo, yeah, he was having a high pitch count, but Servais pulls him here. Penn Murphy's been our most reliable guy out of the pen, so, I mean, I see why, but you, know, you can't allow Castillo to get the final outs. Instead, Murphy walks the first batter in Segura, who had one high and inside, so that loads the bases for Yuli Gurriel, who is 2 0 for 2 on the day with two Ks, and he hits this one up the middle as Crawford dives, but no play, as that'll be an RBI single, so Pauline Castillo might not have been the wisest move. Still 3 2, bases loaded. Jorge Soler will chop this one over to short, and Crawford will make the play, but the Marlins do get one here, and they cut this lead in half. Braxton Carrot will come in in relief for the Marlins. The long reliever will relieve Trevor Rogers, who had a pretty solid day if you take away the first inning. Bottom of the fifth will be led off by Ty France, who grounds this one over to third, and that'll be the first out of the inning. Julio Rodriguez up next. Full count pitch to him, and he looks at strike three. Backdoor slider. Great pitch by Garrett. And then up next, Teoscar Hernandez, the very next pitch. He perfectly times this one to right center, and this one's going to clear into the right center gap. I said against Julio Rodriguez, that backdoor slider was a great pitch. Well, Hernandez was actually on the on-deck circle watching that. And, well, what happened when Garrett tried to throw the same pitch twice? Teoscar Hernandez was ready for it. Great discipline, great study of the film, or not the film, your eyes there by Hernandez to hit the home run. That's the kind of stuff we'd like to see out of him this season. Pollock up next to draw a walk, which means there'll be one on with two outs for Suarez, who clobbers a slider to deep center, and fortunately for Suarez, it's the deepest part of the park, and that'll be the third out of the inning. Diego Castillo comes in later in this ball game with 3.16 ERA. He comes in with two outs here in the six. He's tasked with getting the final out of the inning, but John Birdie is not going to make that easy for him. The leadoff hitter hits this one into right field for a two-out single. That brings up Jose Iglesias, who on the very first pitch, Birdie's going to steal, and Murphy well, can't handle the exchange, so. That's a stolen base for Birdie, his 13th of the season. So now runner in scoring position for Jose Iglesias. He's going to ground over to Suarez, who feels it cleanly, and makes the throw over to first. Still 4-2. Next inning. Still two outs in the seventh here. This is strike three as it gets away from Murphy, and Murphy has a chance to get him at first, but it's offline. Defense is important, you know, too. That's the third error of the day, and it puts a runner on with two outs for Yuli Gurriel. You give the Marlins another Bonus opportunity, and Yuli Gurriel it does have an RBI on the day. And the Mariners are going to actually turn it over to Paul Seawold to get the final out of this inning. First pitch is to Gurriel. He chops this one over to third. Suarez makes a backhanded throw, sets his feet all the way across the diamond. Thank you, Eugenio Suarez. You deserve a gold glove. Next inning, bottom seven, Ty France leads off. 1-0 pitch perfectly singled into left field for a base hit. And I bring up Julio Rodriguez. 3-0 pitch, and he will draw a four-pitch walk. No. The ump's actually going to say a strike. Rodriguez can't believe it. I can't believe it either. I thought that one was definitely ball four. In the end, it doesn't matter as he draws a full count walk, so he just makes Braxton Garrett work a little bit harder. So now two on. No outs for Tasker Hernandez, who's already homered once today. He's looking to do it again out to deep right, but it's falling out the warning track. Runners will tag, including Rodriguez, who actually tags the second. Great heads-up play there by J-Rod to get into scoring position. He's got great speed. So that puts now runners on second and third for Pollock, and with the open base now because of the tag, they're going to intentionally walk him. They don't want to face A.J. Pollock. He's been swinging a hot bat. So they're going to rather face Johanio Suarez, who's 0 for 3 on the day, and Suarez makes the Marlins pay. He feels slighted. They, didn't, they wanted to pitch to him instead. And on the very first pitch, Suarez hits a grand slam, another grand salami for the M's. They had a lot of these in the month of June, and Suarez, despite hitting under 200, just belted his 13th home run of the season. The ultimate do-or-die guy here in this season, and well, he definitely did for us. Four runs for the Mariners off that one shot. That'll bring in Devin Smeltzer, the former twin, as he comes into the ballgame. Tasked with getting through the seventh, and he jams Tom Murphy here with two outs, flown up into right field. That'll end 
the seventh inning, but this one now eight to two, and the Mariners will ride that score into the final as they beat the Miami Marlins here in game one. MVP, I mean, it's got to be Eugenio Suarez. Obviously the grand slam, but when nobody in the infield wanted to play defense, Suarez was making great plays at third base, backhanded, sliding grabs. I mean, hard throws across the diamond. Eugenio Suarez, I don't think he got enough love for this game as he helped the Mariners basically win on offense and defense. I mean, they gave player of the game to Tasker Hernandez. I mean, come on. It's got to go to Eugenio Suarez as we take game one of the three games set here at home against the Miami Marlins. Colton Wall, remember he got hurt on his ribs. Unfortunately, they're bruised, but that'll only keep him out for a couple of days. So we did dodge a big bullet there. But we do lose game two. Final score, four to two in this one as Hazel Cesaro pitched eight and two thirds as we finally got runs off of him in the ninth inning. And then game three, we do bounce back and win though five to four. Marlins make it close in the ninth, but we're able to close it down and get the win as Evan White actually homered in his start here today. There's a trade around the league. The Diamondbacks acquired Taylor Walls for the Rays, Justin Martinez. Just a prospect swap, so we're not going to go too deep into that trade. As we go into the second half of the season where the Marlins, or the episode, excuse me, as the Mariners are going to be rocking their City Connects 43-24 and at home against the Chicago White Sox, who are straight 500 at 35-35. and Robbie Ray will get the start on the mound, the 2021 AL Cy Young Award winner. As here's how the White Sox will look today. I feel for this White Sox squad because they've been hit hard by injuries this year. Eloy Jimenez got off to one of the best starts in recent memory. He's injured. Shortstop Tim Anderson, he's also injured. So the White Sox, I mean, 704 OPS, 10th in the American League. I mean, they're missing their top two bats. So it's unfortunate for the shy Sox, but somebody always gets bit by the injury bug, and it so happens to be them. Back to the game, though, is the first batter will strike out, and then Yohan Moncada will walk, and that leaves Luis Robert Jr. up next, who hits a... Fastball over to the left field corner, but Pollock will have enough space to put that one away for the second out of the inning. That brings up Andrew Vaughn next to two pitch. Popped up into foul territory. Ty France will have enough space, and that'll be how the top of the first ends. On the mound for the White Sox will be Michael Kopech making his 14th start of the season. 6-2 and two with a 352 ERA. Pretty good numbers for him this season. With Colton Wong still out with bruised ribs, it'll actually be Sam Haggerty getting the start and the leadoff spot at second base. Other than that, in the lineup bouts how you would expect. Cal Raleigh getting the start at catcher today since it is a right-handed pitcher. And then Dylan Moore is the DH. Also, we're hitting 246 on the season. That's now eighth in the American League. So that average is definitely getting better. The offense is starting to wake up this season. Haggerty begins with a 1-2 slider up and in. He pops that one up in the infield for the first out. J.P. Crawford up next. His average actually dropped to 286. So it was up over at 300 at one point. He gets a 2-2 pitch and bloops it into left field. So a nice piece of hitting there by Crawford to get on base. For Ty France, who up next, 0-1 fastball, clobbers it to deep center. That one actually dies up pretty fast as that will be put away for the second out of the inning. Julio Rodriguez up next, 1-2 pitch, and he can't connect on the slider. Goes down swinging. That'll be the end of the first inning. We'll stay with the Mariners' bottom two now as Tasker Hernandez will pop up an inside fastball that's put away. Nice hustle by Vaughn. Eugenio Suarez up next, and he strikes out inside on the fastball as well. So Kopech dealing here in the early going. 2-1 now to A.J. Pollock as Pollock actually gets a hanging changeup and rips it to left field. That's going to one-hop the wall. Pollock's hot month continues. That is a stand-up two-out double for the left field, or is that is actually... His 21st double of the season. Pollock has been swinging a very hot bat. But the next batter, Cal Raleigh, crushes a curveball to right field. No doubt about that one. Kopech hung a curveball in the big dumper. Made him pay. My, oh, my. That one was crushed indeed. A two-run shot for Cal Raleigh. His fifth home run of the season. And the Mariners now take a 2 to nothing lead here against the White Sox. Next batter, Dylan Moore. He gets a hang curveball as well, but also not the same result, though, as he chops that one over to second base, but that'll end the second. Staying with the Mariners, bottom three now. Sam Haggerty leading off, and he crushes one to the right center field, and this one's going to bounce up and over the wall. An automatic double for Haggerty to begin the inning. So he's on second base, and J.P. Crawford gets a 2-0 fastball inside. Can't turn on it. Says easy fly ball for the first out. Ty France up next, 0-1 pitch to him, and he swings through a curveball that actually gets to the back wall, and Haggerty's actually going to move up to third base. So a wild pitch moves a runner just 90 feet away. 
Later in the event, Ty France, though, will strike out on the inside fastball. So now a base hit is needed to score. And Julio Rodriguez is going to do just that. Curveball again left up in the zone. And J-Rod continues to swing a great bat. He's up over 50 RBIs this season. He might not be putting up the flashiest of stats like he did last year, but J-Rod is having almost a even better season this year. To Oscar Hernandez will strike out on the low fastball, so that'll end the bottom of the third. But the Mariners now jump out to a 3-0 lead. So let's go back to the White Sox offense, see if they have any sort of answer for these runs. And Andrew Braun's going to try to do just that as he hits a leadoff double to being in the top of the fourth. That will be his 10th double of the season. Next bagger, Jake the Burger King man, gets plumped on the inside of his thigh. So Robbie Ray puts the first two on as the catcher Yasmani Grandal up next will bloop this one into left center. And that's going to get down, and Grandal gets an RBI single as Grandal continues to be a pain in my side in this channel. If you remember my Cleveland series, he was getting hits against us all the time. Still nobody out as Elvis Andrews will fix that as he flies out to right field where Hernandez will put him away. Nobody tests the arm. Monster all bought up next. 1 0 pitch. Slider drilled to deep left center. Julio is actually going to get underneath this one, and again, they won't test the arm. So two flyouts in the outfield and no base runners advance. So that'll be Oscar Colas up next, and he's going to fly out into the outfield as well. So three flyouts into the outfield to end at the top of the fourth. The White Sox do get one. Back to the Mariners, though, bottom four. That one's going to come right back as Pollock turns on an inside curveball deep to left field and a solo shot for A.J. Pollock, who's been putting on an incredible month of June. I mean, his home run total is now up to 10. He's been swinging a very hot bat, hitting long balls, getting on base. A.J. Pollock is at least the Mariners player of the month so far. It's now 4-1 in favor of the Mariners. There's two outs now in the inning, and Ty France is going to turn on a slider and drill it to left field. Great diving effort out there, but not enough, and that's a two-out double for Ty France. So the inning is not over for Michael Kopech, but his day is, in fact, done as they will pull him here. Goes four and two-thirds inning. They'll turn it over to the righty Davis Martin to try to get the final out of the inning. He's got to do it against Julio Rodriguez, who hits a 1-1 slider into right field. And that'll score another run, another RBI for Julio Rodriguez, another double. And the Mariners extend their lead again, now 5-1 in favor of the M's. Tasker Hernandez up next, first pitch swing and curveball outside the zone. Just pulls this one over short where that'll be made. But the Mariners now up by four. Penn Murphy called on in relief again as he already is finally up over the one mark. I know it's shocking. It's so bad for Penn Murphy. Starts off the top of the six by getting Jake Berger to pop up to Ty France. That'll bring up Yasmani Grandal up next. 1-0 pitch. This time Grandal will not get it hit against the Mariners. He flies out to a right field. So two quick outs for Murphy. And then Alvis Andrews with a full count pitch. will try to bloop this one into left center. But Julio too fast tracks that one down. And then White Sox go down 1-2-3 in the top of the six. Meanwhile, bottom six, Johanio Suarez again. Drills one to left field off of the scoreboard. I said this man was a strikeout or home run type of hitter. May was unfortunately just the strikeouts, but June, the home runs are back. Johanio Suarez, his 14th home run of the season. He might just be hitting below 200, but he's second on the team in homers. Make it make sense. So that's now 6-1 in favor of the Mariners. This game has kind of gotten away from the Chicago White Sox. Matt Brash comes in in relief for the final two innings. Final out of the game is going to be Elvis Andrews as he chops this one over to Suarez, who makes the play at first. And the Mariners win this one by a final score of 6-1. to one. Great day for the offense, who's really started to come alive. They get to celebrate another win here at home in front of the Seattle faithful as they continue to look like one of the best teams in baseball as they celebrate six runs on nine hits for the Mariners, one run on five hits for the White Sox. The win goes to Robbie Ray. Loss goes to Michael Kopech. And player of the game will indeed go to A.J. Pollock. Two for three with a home run and a double as his hot month continues. All around a good win here for the Mariners. They got some runs via the home run. They got some home runs by not having to go the long ball and just a solid win. Fortunately, it was a big loss in game two, 7-2 to two to the White Sox. Despite Eugenio Suarez hitting two more home runs, it was not enough as it was just two solo shots. And then we do lose game three, six to two, so we lose the series. We didn't score our two runs until the final inning as Lucas Giolito had a great day against us. Eight strong innings from him. 
And then immediately following this game, we actually get a trade from the White Sox. And it's very funny because they were willing to trade us Lucas Giolito for Ty France. I guess they figured, hey, he just pitched eight solid innings against you. Don't mind his five ERA and don't mind that Ty France who just went 0 for three. That's who we want. That was the easiest decline of all time. The Mariners have a day off in the next part of this month. So we're going to take a look at the minor league clubs next episode. See how the AAA Tacoma Rainers and AA Arkansas Travelers are doing. But thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, make sure you drop a like and you subscribe down below, especially if you want more franchise content. This is Mr. Rob, and I'll see you in the next one.